My name is Ann Smith, and I'm here again with my friend Anthony Bazia. Together, we have uh, worked on two nonprofits Project Bazia, that pri primarily produces books, um, and Africans United, which works with refugees in the main area, particularly Greater Portland area, but Africans United of New England is going to eventually spread out so that we're connected to every single New England state. Um, our last two shows talked about the uh, hope that we had for a 10-year celebration for July 9th, which is the anniversary of the CPA, which is the official beginning of South Sudan as an independent nation. And here we are, uh, July 13th. July 9th has come and gone. Uh, other than a few probably small local celebrations in families or <clears throat> we don't know about the whole country of the whole diaspora, there might have been some celebrations, but we saw no signs of it on social media. Uh, there was no celebration in South Sudan and uh, we're disappointed. I think that would be the best way to describe it, because to us, 10 years of independence should be recognized and perhaps accomplishments looked at. Um, Basia, uh, I do know that uh, Salva Kiir was inter interviewed on that day, on the 9th, and asked uh, what kind of celebrations were going to be going on. And uh, basically, I think he said none. What else did he say about that? Yeah, he, he really he really put it in a simple way. And I, personally, for me, I give him a credit. I mean, he was honest to say, we lost South Sudan for 10 years. Uh, because uh, the, the celebration alone for when South Sudan became a nation, that a high number in the history of the world, I can say, not only the level of uh, the continent of Africa, but what happened after that, you can call it sad, but in other way, I call it is good for other way to look at it because almost there's a two fight all the time. There's a guerrilla fight and there's a fight for the power. And I think uh, start from Dr. Grant pass away. That's part of the beginning of the issue. I can put it. In my Which happened even before yeah. the CPA. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and that told me when the head of the game started going early after, I mean, it was very funny. They fight for 22 years, I don't want to talk about Nyanya one. And they came, the man was only leave in the power according to the official, the time he get back to the power, he was the vice president of Sudan, John Grant, Dr. John Grant. And 22 days or 21, he's gone. And that's the, the journey of the different idea of knowledge of where there was the movement about it. And we never feel it in the right channel until we became a nation, we were happy for that. But it looked like we don't have a plan after that in, in a good way. And, and, and I think that's the way I can describe it, my own opinion. I'm not saying everybody has to agree with me, you know. Well, I think to me, one of the most interesting things about the whole, um, the whole situation in South Sudan is the <clears throat> lack of communication between the different groups, the different tribes and the different powerful groups, and um, the lack of open communication um, between them and the rest of the world. Uh, the CPA would never have happened had it not been for Western interference. I think that there would have been a continued guerrilla war going on and on and on and on, you know, for many, many years. Um, where it would have gone, I don't know. But I rather think that the North would not have said, oh, yeah, fine, let's just let these guys go and do their own thing. And I think it was just an ongoing war. That was the only thing that was happening for a long, long time. You said it started in 1955, right? Um, I'm reminded. I'm reminded sometime of uh, this whole business of no celebration and, and what's going on and one group not talking to another, to a story I read the, uh, not too long ago about, uh, it's an African fable. African fables are very different from uh, the ones we have here in the US. They're, they're subtle. And this one is about a flood. 
there's a great flood and um, all of the animals are seeking higher ground or those who can go into trees are going there, climbing mountains. And the monkeys as a group are uh, going to, they're aware there's trouble coming, there's gonna be a flood and they're charging away towards higher ground and some tall trees and they notice that in the stream beside them there's a lot of fish and the fish are leaping and jumping and in the water and you know up and down and seem to be very excited and suddenly the monkeys think oh my goodness oh my goodness the f who's going to save the fish there the flood is coming and they can't climb trees so they very carefully in their efforts to be good neighbors pick up each pick up a fish and carry it with them to a high tree or to a mountain and lay it down nearby so that the fish from their point of view will be in good shape and then the fish flop for a while and then if you've ever caught a fish you know what happens next and then they start moving and the monkeys go ah we did a good job they are resting now and you might say well what's the point of this well the point is that the monkeys had no clue what the fish needed which is often the case not only in a country like South Sudan where one tribe doesn't really understand what another tribe needs or the leaders don't understand what the people as a group need in order <coughs> excuse me to survive and do well but you also have international powers coming in and saying oh you should do this and this and this and this is what your constitution should look like and they're not asking the fish um, I think John Garang the loss of John Garang was key it was pivotal um, you said that during our last show that, uh, or conversation, that uh, John Garang had a plan. He had talked to everybody. He seemed to be knowledgeable about what everybody wanted and needed. And he was very strongly opposed to having some other powers control what the South Sudanese people needed. He wanted South Sudan to take its greatest strength, which is the land, the green land that shows up in the flag, and make it the breadbasket of Africa and possibly of a good portion of the world. Um, and in order to do this, he, he planned his life around that. Yeah, this is one of the things when he did his master in the United States in Iowa about farming and he educate. And one of the things, if Grant was still in the life after the CPA agreement and they became a nation, he wanted the military to be part of the farming because he doesn't accept to be handing hand out all the time, bringing food from UN and other uh, organization in the world. Wow. Uh, he won the military to be dependent, to be feeding themselves. And maybe after that, they can be able to be part of right now. Uh, we have even African, Uni African Union by order to, help, uh, to solve the issue of Africa. So maybe that time, if he was still in the life, he can be saying, well, South Sudan became a good farming, good staff who can support African Union. Because this African military already, if there's any issue, uh, they can step among themselves. And I, I, and I, uh, I like the one was happening between Senegal and Gambia, because one of the president was from Gambia. He don't want to be step out at him. Time is over. But the African Union step in and solve the issue. So when I'm looking at it, according to John Garang's idea of South Sudan to be in the military to be able um, to feed the military or to feed the nation of South Sudan, that was a, a part of him and part of him education. But he's gone and so now we wait another year to see what happens. Um, we are going to continue this program
And one of the things we'd like to do is bring in some people from different tribes and people from South Sudan who have considerable experience. But our, um, our personal mission uh, in Africans United is beyond just South Sudan. I mean, South Sudan is very important enough so that we've written several books about it and encouraged uh, several authors uh, from that country to write for us. But we also, in Africans United, are interested in um, the welfare of all African refugees. Um, and one of the things we are aware of and this is also part of Garang's philosophy, as, he, as I said with the, you said with the agriculture, is that um, we believe, Africans United believes, that you don't just hand people money and you don't just hand them what they need to continue to live from day to day. It's the old idea of, of teaching a man to fish. So you need to help them get an education, start businesses, and learn how to work in the system that they are living in now here in the United States, uh, which means a lot of things. Um, so I'm shifting here to talking about uh, our local mission with Africans United, um, which we'll have uh, some information on the screen several times during this program so that you can contact us. Uh, but why don't we start with the uh, uh, Bazia, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, your affiliation with the Welcome Center, uh, which is over on 24 Preble Street. Yeah, um, first thing, uh, we have to say thank you for Welcome Center, and then still we have to remember our brother who passed away for last May, I believe. Uh, it was May, Elaine uh, Nahimana, uh, uh, who Elaine. was the founder, one of the founders. He was the founder of uh, Welcome Center, and then he was the one who got him image. And uh, one of the things I am still remind him uh, and everybody who in Parliament giving him a credit and well to be educated that uh, to keep him legacy life. So right now, we, since we get back after all this time with the corona, uh, we're getting some funding for the small business. Uh, and African United and Welcome Center became part of the, like a partner. We're working together to, to establish the goal of Africa, our other migrant, because we're all migrant, in uh, uh, the same umbrella of our Welcome Center. And uh, that's the goal right now. We're trying to educate everybody. And the other thing, uh, through this discussion, we tell everybody, welcome to Welcome Center, because it's, it's the name is Welcome Center. So anybody listening to this show, you're welcome anytime. We, we offer advice, we offer a system for the business, uh, migration issue, sometimes uh, citizenship. So there's during, a lot. During the coronavirus? Uh, uh, we support some small business. You were very, very conscientious about making sure that all the health, uh, health. goals were being met. You yeah. know, people were getting the information they needed. That's correct. And, I, and I, I have to say that I think that's one of the most important functions of the Welcome Center, is what you need when you come here, when you're new here. And this, I've learned the hard way, is you need to know how the system works. That's correct. Um, I've, I've, been, I've been with you to Africa, to several different countries, and I've talked to many people. And it's really amazing how different Africa is from the United States in one simple thing. There really isn't a system most of the time. You kind of like uh, do what you think is right, and nobody, nobody's going to come in and say, well, do you have a license for this? Do you have any pieces of paper? Do you even have a recognition if you're using a building that you own this building? It's, to an American, it's mind boggling. Uh, why don't you tell a little bit about what you've occasionally helped people who are already starting business deal with? Uh, the first thing we, we, we can uh, give example, we have a, a good friend of us, uh, Lucy. She have a store in uh, Cumberland. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Marac Mariah, uh, Mariah store. store. Yeah. Uh, we really help her a lot, and uh, even through the hub, even now she started doing a lot of stuff by herself better than 
in the beginning. The store right now is more organized, more open. You can get to the store, you can see the item you're looking for. Because the more you organize the level of the business according to the United States standard, because everything have code. That's why we have a legislation, we have to go to city hall, we have to get allowances, we have to make sure the, 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 the food item is accurate, it's not expired. So uh, this is why we, we step in African United about those stuff. And, and we start helping them even through the bank. Because you understand the loan and uh, make sure you're not uh, getting more than what you have or you're spending more than what you're not supposed to spend. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we, we're getting to the better way and we're still asking more people to be welcome to us, to us. us. And then the other thing I just came up with a new idea too through this, my skill give me a chance to have a new company called Bezier, uh, uh, Bezier Consulta Counseling, Counseling and, and, and Service. Because I feel like I've done a lot of stuff in in United States since I've been here long enough. But to make the story short, it's still African and United welcome to give more help and more advice. We'll, we'll help you get started. We'll direct you to the right people. Yeah. And um, if necessary, uh, uh, we'll be able to connect you with other nonprofits, which is another thing that the uh, Welcoming Center is able to do. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, that, or the other thing, there are agencies for that. Um, education is a big piece of the Welcoming Center. Um, I know that there have been a number of programs. They have a language lab there. That's correct. Uh, yeah, and they have a number of programs that have been designed for specific people going into specific careers who needed better communication skills. Yeah, that's taking place. Even there's other things coming up in, in August. Uh, that's going to be part of uh, mechanic, uh, air condition, uh, welding machine. And even uh, I feel like I'm going to sign even myself to the uh, welding machine. Uh, because if you've done this training, I believe it's going to be between uh, three months. So you'll get trained in skills, but you'll also get trained in how to deal with the skill or the business you're going to form, form of, in, uh, English. in English. So you'll know, I mean, you may have already been an automobile mechanic in yeah. Africa, yeah. but if you can't talk to a customer, it's hard. he's going to go someplace else, you know, he or she is going to go someplace else. Uh, I know I've learned a lot from this end of it, as a, as a retired teacher, I had very little knowledge about what was involved in founding a business. And uh, we have a friend who is a lawyer who frequently um, creates incorporations for people. And I was there the day he was helping um, Lucy incorporate, and he explained what an LLC is and why you want this. Uh, you may have seen this on the name of a company, LLC, LLC this. <laughs> what the LLC does, which is it's a legal document that protects you from being responsible for any huge expenses that come perhaps as a result of something in your business. Um, if you open a store, for example, and uh, it's a bad day and there's ice on the stoop, now you're probably going to have to carry some kind of insurance for this. But the bottom line is, and we all know people get tremendous amounts of money sometimes from lawsuits, do you want to lose everything else you've worked to obtain since you got here because you opened a business? No, the LLC separates your personal property, your car, your house, your lease on your apartment, maybe a condo, whatever you have managed to accrue financially it separates it from the business so that if something goes wrong with the business, they can't take everything you own, which is, in Africa, that's the reverse. That's the downside, I think, of not having any um, system is when a business goes bust, the guy loses everything, right? Yeah. And he's got to start all over again. Here in the United States, you can start a business, it can succeed or it can fail. But you're not going to lose anything more than what you personally put into it. In other words, your house will not be taken away from you because your store failed. And that's something to think about. Um, I've been looking at the newsletter 
for the Welcoming Center. I know their, their vision is very broad. Um, they have a language lab, which I said they use, as I said, they use very well, but they also use it to uh, help people in the medical field, in nursing. Um, I know um, I've talked to the new director, the new executive director, Reza Jalili, and he has an enormous number of ideas. Uh, one of them in particular is going to involve uh, not just Project Bazia, but some other organizations. Uh, but it's centered towards youth, and by youth we mean the next generation of refugees. Maybe people who were born here, but whose families came from another country. Tell us a little bit about the leadership program. Yeah, the leadership program we have, uh, uh, we're going to be picking according to what we're thinking uh, between three high school, uh, one of them, Bolden High School, uh, Casco Bay, I believe, and then Dating High School. And we're looking between 10 and 12 young man and young girl uh, to be in, in the level how to understand the system and how to to engage them life in a system and then they can get back to their own community and they can do better because we live in the same umbrella the more we engage to understand the system the more we make our life better and through this program we're talking about we need to make sure they can get a good job even when the school in the summer time and, and, and engage them in a system in a different level of organization, but they will learn better. And especially- When you say a good job, okay, I think everybody knows you can go to McDonald's or you can go to Burger King or you can go someplace and get a job where you're working with your hands and doing the same thing repetitively over and over and over again. But that's not what you want to do the rest of your life. Uh, I don't think so. I'm talking about a good job, it, it can be related to, to your education. Uh, it can be bank. That's going to request good English, going to request math, going to request part of your education. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I mean. Any, an office job? An office job. All this is going to request what you've done in the school or what you're doing and to give you that right, chance. Right. So you will feel better than uh, just to go to work on McDonald's or Burger King or whatever you want to call it. So you, if maybe you, let's just say I, I'm from Angola and I decided I want to be a nurse. Okay, I may know an awful lot already and I found that Africans tend to be very sympathetic and compassionate people. Uh, they've already, in many families, taken care of the elderly or the sick because there's not a lot of hospitals over there. So they've got those people skills that um, may be lacking in some American kids, but they don't have the language skills and they don't have the scientific knowledge or the how, again, how the system works. So they come to the Welcome Center or they come to Africans United or both. Maybe Africans United is where they end up after they come to the Welcome Center. And we sit down and say to them, okay, let's work out a plan for one, how are you going to pay for your education? Um, where are you going to work when you're not going to class? You're not going to work at McDonald's. Hopefully, you're going to work at Maine Med or one of the other medical facilities, even if you're just working in a doctor's office watching the kids of a pediatrician you're getting experience because when they ask you for your job resume, they're going to want to know everything you did to learn the skills that you're claiming to have. Um, the leadership program, talk a little bit more about that. I think it's broader than just to high school kids, right? Yeah, it's going to be broader. And then even we, we're thinking to add even other kids for who are born here or American to be in that program because both of them, they will help each other. Because if you're coming from different background and somebody born here, you're still going to bring something from where you came from. And the person who here is going to give us what they've been doing or what they look at the leadership. So we will be affiliated with, through Welcome, the Welcoming Center, through to other organizations too. Um, I heard that uh, uh, Reza Jalili mentioned to me that there's some organizations involving the environment. They'd like to get some young people, but some young people from other countries That's to correct. become concerned about taking care of the environment. Um, there's a lot to talk about. 
there's a lot to do. Uh, thank you for being my guest today. Uh, we're going to try to make this a regular monthly event. And uh, I would like to also remember the person that you mentioned about the Welcome Center, um, Elaine Nahimana. Um, I think of him often whenever I go into the Welcome Center. Uh, he was a very, uh, my favorite word for him is elegant. Uh, and that's because he had that quality that made him so helpful for people from another country and for Americans. He knew both worlds. He was from Burundi. He went to school there. He graduated from college there. But he also lived in Zurich. His father was an ambassador from Burundi. So this was a very sophisticated man. And um, like John Garang, he's That's a great cool. loss to this community because he uh, had a lot to offer a particular part of the community. Thank you for our show today and uh, for listening. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.